there, my name is Andrew Lupascu, and for this lightning talk, I would like to share my master's thesis in information design project, um, which deals with questions of how information does or does not, can or cannot influence and inspire us to act or not act in the context of the current environmental crisis. So when I first started my master's program, I set for myself these three rules to follow when choosing my topics and shaping the outcome of my projects over those two years. They were no inciting fear, no talk of others, only us, and there is no wrong, it just is. As my research progressed, I came across a fourth rule that I adopted from the book Being Ecological by Timothy Morton. This is a very popular theoretical text about current ecological ideas and has inspired many artists and designers, um, as far as I know. In our class, we had a little bit of a Timothy Morton fan club going for a while. All of us were quoting them constantly. But anyway, in my new rule, uh, my new rule that I adopted was to resist the urge to inform. Morton writes that a lot of environmental and ecological writing aims to arm the reader with more and more information leading to a so-called information dump mode. Basically, they're saying, here's all the info you need about the state of the world, now go and do something about it. Unfortunately, this often leads to anxiety and paralysis and doomerism, feelings that I was having while working on this thesis and before and even currently, but you know, it comes and goes. So I really wanted to see if I could create something within the experimental space of a thesis project that would, as Morton says, help people live the data, feel emotionally connected and inspired to act. Something that could trigger the imagination rather than simply inform. So my research subject was the humble tree. It does kind of feel like there is a lot of information out there these days that is challenging and shifting our understanding of trees. You may have heard about mycorrhizal networks, the wood wide web, trees that can talk to each other. Well, one way or another, these ideas are challenging the general understanding of trees as being inert and simple organisms. Not to even mention their miraculous ability to turn CO2 into wood, but you know. So what can I do with all of this, you guessed it, information and data that I was gathering about trees? So my favorite data set to emerge from the research ended up being a list of words. I was finding so many new terms, concepts, names, and short phrases that all captured almost entire universes of ideas. If anyone here is familiar with solar punk, shout out. But for example, the phrase mother tree is entirely unscientific, but it represents the entire exhaustively scientific, data-driven, field research heavy, life work of Dr. Suzanne Simard, who chose this term in order to create an emotional connection between us and the outcome of her research, the discovery of interconnected tree networks. So this word list became a glossary within my thesis book. And this is where it started feeling a little bit soulless. The very purpose of a glossary or a dictionary for that matter is ease of access um, and a quick reference. You get in, you get your information and you get out. There's nothing to linger over. But I wanted people to linger on these words. My bias uh, is that this data deserves a moment longer than we'd usually be willing to give it. It needs a slow reading. So instead of creating a book glossary, I made a short, I made short one minute mini documentaries for each one of these words so that you could engage with it a little bit more slowly. And they are also not in alphabetical order. <laughs> As you are watching, you never know what you're going to get because they play at random. The, the green glossary currently consists of um, nine words um, at the moment, and it is constantly growing. 
So maybe at the rate of one word per year, more or less, depending on the weather. Um, not all the words are real, some are invented, but all of them capture an essential aspect of the research. So all of the information is there. There is a lot to learn, um, but you can take your time with it. And ultimately, this was the best response that I could think of to my final rule of no information dump mode. Um, we all have all, we have all the information we need, but we just need to sit with it and read it slowly. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you have a nice day. And just congrats on your thesis. I mean, obviously, what did you get the reaction to it that you were hoping to get? Do you feel like you were able to kind of get your message across without being so information heavy? Um, I think, yeah, it was interesting to see people interact with it when we displayed it to the public. Um, it was a lot of just kind of sitting and staring, <laughs> um, which was the intention because they're short videos. But I think that it gave this like sense of calmness, which is kind of what I was going for. And um, yeah, there was like the lingering and the sort of listening quietly. And uh, yeah, there wasn't a lot of questions, but I think, but following up later on, I heard from some people that said, oh, I really thought about that. It was nice. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure they were just again stunned <laughs> by it. Um, <laughs> or just Megan, falling asleep. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> With the serenity, I mean, it was so serene and calming. Like that's a yeah. perfectly valid response to that. Um, <laughs> Megan asked, "So this is is this part of your thesis, and or is this your your full thesis um, that you're and you've already finished, right? You've already submitted yeah. that, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, I finished it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the the first part of the research was the book." Um, where I collected all these stories and put it put together all the research and I had this whole system of like looking at 2D, 3D, 4D, whatever. Um, and then the uh, the green glossary was just like the outcome, the design outcome of the research. Um, so yeah, it was uh, it, it it is finished. And sorry, I forgot the rest of the question. Um, oh no, that was it. Yeah, I'm curious. Then with all that research yeah. and all the design that went into it, do you have an idea sense of like how long this took? I mean, obviously it was more than a semester, right? Or like a semester's length of work. Yeah, I mean, it was. Um, it's funny actually. The final the final thing only took about a week, but I had been collecting data, or um, I was collecting videos. I was trying different approaches to like. I really wanted to make some kind of documentary, and. Um, collecting stuff over at least six months, but then the final thing kind of clicked together and um, came together in, in about a couple of weeks, yeah, at the end, <laughs> as you do in school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, uh, question, I mean, you said you, there were nine words, right, that you had, had done. Do you have a favorite that is the one that we should go look at if we want to kind of see their, your best example? <laughs> Yeah, um, I think the the one that would have also been the title of the uh, whole project was Arboreality, which I thought was kind of like a tree reality, kind of alternate reality thing. It gives you this feeling of like, if you were to walk into a forest, what if you were to walk into like another dimension, you know, what would that, what would that mean to all of us, I guess? Um, so yeah, I think that's my favorite one. <laughs> that's a good one, yeah. I like Mother Tree too, but Arboreality, like you you get a vision of what it yeah, might be. Yeah. Um, cool. And I mean, you just submitted this. You <laughs> had a lot of work on your plate. You're probably excited to have some of it off, but do you have an idea of what's next? Like, or you said you might be adding some more words or um, what, is there a part two or are you just going to a totally different direction going to try something new after this? Um, well, I, I like the project and um, <clears throat> sorry, I have a bit of a cough. <laughs> um, I like the project and I, I do mean that I'm, I'm going to try to keep adding words to it. I like I always take videos and pictures and I think it's like a nice way to compile the things that I already do. Um, and I would like to I have like an Instagram account, so I'm going to try to like post to it whenever I come across inspiration. Um, this is kind of like my take on climate activism, you know, like I just I feel like I constantly want to do something about it. Um, and the, the project is actually going to be displayed um, as part of an exhibition called uh, Main Contain, um, uh, sorry, what's it called? Main Contain Traces of Forests, uh, and it's going to be in Turin. So that's really exciting that more people are going to get to see it. 
Um, and yeah, I think, I don't know exactly what's next, but it like, it's close to my heart. So I probably will keep working on it. I love to hear that you're getting a lot of love in the chat too. I mean, <laughs> definitely other folks who want to see if it's going to be expanded, if, you know, in terms of collecting collective data, would you ever consider displaying in another format? Have you given thought to that? Like a 3D art or interactive art install, something in that space? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, now it's a interactive art, art install um, with videos. It could be multiples. It could be just one. Um, but I think actually, ironically, I want to turn it into a book as well, <laughs> which is what I was trying to avoid in the first place. But I think it might be like a nice sort of, um, yeah, a little bit more of a visual experience of a glossary or a dictionary or whatever. As long as it's like recycled paper, it's fine. Exactly. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, well, we're going to bring up our last uh, lightning talk, but thank you so much for your time and for sharing that with us. It was absolutely thank thrilling. You. Please, if you, if you so will, much. put um, your Instagram in the chat so folks can take a look at some of the other stuff you're working on. Um, mm -hmm. And then we're going to go ahead and bring up our next lightning talk. So thank you. Thank you.